cycle number five, we are uh, almost uh, very close to the end. Um, here we have a seventh Eureka, and the Eureka here is all about breathing. Breathing low, breathing high, bringing the soft, bringing with wind. You look at it and whoosh, just let yourself uh, fly. Now, number two is a continuation. You have the woman, right, left and center, continuing to breathe. The man, in the right and in the center, continuing to breathe. And just the men in the center are echoing the men soloist with low, extreme register. So what the men do, soloist, just try to imitate them in a kind of way, but very low. Like something like a shade of a, of a voice. In the third, you have a, again this, this accumulation. So you have left and center women doing the whispering stuff. The men in the left doing the whispering stuff. The men in the center are echoing. And in the right, you have uh, the men and the women doing So it's, it's a kind of a wavy thing. You have the k that make the accent and the sh that make the continuation of the sound. Now it's, it's just remember, it sounds maybe a little bit complex, but if you are a man and you have man logo, we see, you know, you need to echo. You don't need to worry too much about what the other do. This is uh, my worry and the conductor's worry. And here we are in number 15. Number 15, it's all about this evolution of things. So we have in, uh, men and women in the right doing the stuff. And in the center you have the echo stuff of men. And the women in the center are doing seventh reka. And uh, in the right you have uh, men and women doing a Morse code. <laughs> with conductor indication. Now we know the Morse code is a very famous uh, form of communication uh, very used very little now which is about a uh, long, short and stop. You know, like, uh, like ships or uh, airplanes, you know, this is this like low tech sound. So you can use a beep or a two or something like this and you go you have a whole bunch of people doing this Morse code and the conductor will take you up we stop you say go number five is a very short element that it's a kind of closing of the stuff so when, when, when he will make uh, number five, he will make you already set go and when you go really just do it because it will take very short time. It's all the people are doing very quick and loud breathe in and then stop like oh this is this is my breathe in it takes one second so if you will make it bang you go everybody will and close. It's very good, I think. Good for who? Good for music. Number six, left, woman only, echo softly, 
leading soloist using same techniques, feel in rarely in extreme high register, Morse code, soft accent, fast breath. So you have the, the woman singer is singing something and you go like with her. And some variation. So she sings the Here I put some a little bit of Morse code. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's a kind of um, vague. It's not very clear an indication because it gives you freedom, and freedom is okay, you know. Now here in number seven you have the accumulation. So let's continue it. But now also the center is doing this echoing. So you have a bigger echo and more complex. And number eight, all women, left, center, right, are doing this. This kind of. Uh, Echoing. Page 16. Now, number 9. We have a continuation, but here we have some kind of variation. In the design, you see also a kind of psychedelic uh, children that I actually used also in the score of my opera Noise for Sid, dedicated to Sid Barrett. Um, here, you continue, but you also use sometimes softer, more rare, sometimes passing to long notes with a child voice. Note with a lot of air. And this is how children uh, speak and sing. You should, they do, instead of doing ah, ah, they do ha, ah, ah. So you kind of imitate a child voice with a long ah, children voice. Number 10, you have crossfade. Crossfade, it means that not everybody at once, but little by little, you change from this voice to voice of birds. What is voice of birds? There is, there is a composer, his name is Sien, he was fanatic about birds. He write, wrote all the uh, songs of birds. He put them in very important compositions in the 20th century. Now, uh, I don't expect you to be um, a bird imitator but you can do something that comes to your mind. Maybe it's about whistling. In fact, what we are doing, the crossfade, is to cycle number six, welcome cycle number six, the eighth record, where you have a lot of birds, bird voices, whistling, axing, vibrations, and you have the, the smiley of whistling and whistling with uh, air. Now, my, my wife loves birds. We have uh, birds all over in the house, like bird statue, not living uh, birds, and um, just do whatever, you know, I, I have my bird imitations, like it can be also like this that I do with my hair, with whistling. Someone can, I can do we feel this ambient with bird, it will be amazing, especially when you hear what the soloist is doing there and the percussions, and you won't believe it, you say, oh, I did it, and I was a part of something really different.
element number two in the sixth cycle. So we have just left men and women doing white noise with F, white noises. It's accumulation of all the frequencies in my mind. Number three, left continues and center start with noise. So we have and number four, we have uh, the left doing the and the center doing and the right start with text number three written in Gramlo, in gibberish uh, German. It's actually a recomposition of a text by, uh, by Kafka. Here I tell you one of the sources. Kafka is one of my favorite uh, writers in the world. And you just whisper it. Sometimes you can bring one word, another word. Don't worry if you don't know German. I know very little words in German. And here we are in the last uh, page of uh, Reka. It's been a long trip. Uh, number five, we have a game. How nice to uh, arrive to the end with a game. And in this game, there is a kind of uh, rules, you know, like good games do. And here what you have is uh, the conductor gives you the time, like rhythm. Um, um, and you can count in your, uh, in your heart between 1 until uh, uh, 4, or between 1 until 7, until 12. This is the maximum limit. And every one, instead of saying it, you say, you make a sound. Nothing too rude. So, let me explain you again. I count in my heart 1, 2, three, four, without speaking, of course. When I finished my cycle four, I write one and I make a sound instead of the number one. So if I count to four, let's do a bird sound. Let's say we are doing, we are counting until seven. So, or something like this. freedom on how nice and how difficult to have uh, freedom and here you have an image and sing image below softly this is the only indication very strange indication a very difficult and challenging indi indication in order to do out so just take it and do whatever you want with this you know you will, we will work together, I will be there, the conductor will be there, and we will find something nice. If you don't know, you can just use a consonant or a vocal long to create this darkness. Number seven, the last element, 
is a very long element, so it's between three and seven minutes. So uh, here you echo the leading soloist softly, quietly, changing vocal range in continuation. You can also, in parentheses, take a break because singing three, four, five minutes, it's, it's a lot, you know. So in the soloist will go, and ah, you do, ah, uh, and then you rest a little bit and give your neighbors to do it a little bit. And look at the conductor, he will know what to do, he will take you up and down and up and down. And we kind of uh, fade out. This is all uh, the score. We finished the tutorials. I would love to see you in the world premiere, not as public necessarily, but also as crowd. So, thank you for your attention. For any question, you can write me an email and I'll try to get back to you. Bye!